come from a long line of public servants. My father, he was a state's attorney, public defender, just a county attorney in Leonardtown. My mom, she was a school teacher. My great uncle, Senator Paul Bailey, he was a Republican senator for 16 years when being a Republican in St. Mary's County wasn't a, wasn't a very popular thing. I continued this tradition of living in St. Mary's County. I live with my wife, Karen, and my two, and her two children, Helen and Taya. We're actively involved in this community, in the schools, church, Little League, Travel Ball, and various other community volunteer organizations. When I started my career, I was a game warden in both St. Mary's and Calvert counties. Then I started to work statewide. I started working with the U.S. Department of Justice and the Fish and Wildlife Service. I'm now a nationally recognized expert. I completed both my undergraduate and graduate work at Johns Hopkins. Got my master's in management. As far as legislative experience, during the early administration, I was legislative liaison for the Natural Resource Police. During this time, I drafted bills, completed bill reports, worked with Department of Legislative Service. There we go. There. All right. Hey. All right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is a packed room. This is the most people I've ever seen out here for one of these things. And uh, thanks to League of Women Voters and NAACP for sponsoring us here tonight. And uh, I want everyone to jack is just don't worry, you won't die. They're uh, are fun and fast and furious. But so uh, it's been my great honor and privilege to serve uh, as your state senator for the last four years. And I've tried to uh, focus on the things that you find most important and that you're most worried about in your, uh, your daily life. And Years ago, you know, I ran on saying, hey, jobs are the issue, taxes are the problem, spending is the cause. And then the, the top priorities of the government need to be public safety, transportation, and education. And I think I've stuck to that. In fact, the first day in office, I walked in, I laid down a strategy with the staff, and I said, this is what we're doing. If we're doing something not on that list, stop doing it. If it needs to be on the list, let's talk about it. But I think we've, uh, we've kept a laser focus on your priorities, and I believe that we've worked very hard to do that. In this last year, I've been uh, very privileged to be in a position to make a real serious difference on a couple of different issues. And specifically uh, on veterans, did an enormous amount of work on that, I'm very, very proud of, and uh, kind of turned into the Tom Sawyer of uh, Senators. I got everybody else in the legislature doing the work for me now, which is great. And then uh, on school safety. When, uh, when things happened in Parkland and when things really, really uh, got important, uh, we stepped out and we did something, and I will tell you, that was the most proud moment of my term in the last four years, was making that happen for you guys. Now, I think most folks uh, know that I'm a Marine. Uh, it means that I'm a little bit different. I have some rough edges. I'm sorry, that's just who I am. Uh, I try really hard, and I gotta tell you, it's been a real personal journey for me to bite my tongue and wait and count a few seconds, and. Uh, Matt and Deb and Jerry in the back have been the best delegates to work with. They all know uh, what, a, what a job it is for me to, uh, to, to hold it all in and keep it going. But I've tried very hard. And the simple fact is, is that you know I'm one of those guys that just have a low tolerance for BS. I'm going to think for myself. And I'm going to say, I'm going to speak my mind. And it's because I believe that I work for you. I don't work for anybody else. And I got elected to this office. I asked for this job so that I can work for you guys. So I believe that I have been that bulldog and I'm hoping to be that bulldog again for you for the next four years. Thank How experienced are you in the operations of the Maryland General Assembly? Can we count on you to hit the ground running? I just gave in my opening the fact that I worked there as the legislative liaison. I also worked there as the FOP uh, representative. So I feel very experienced. Obviously I don't have the four years that my opponent has for being there, but four years ago he didn't have it either. And I don't know that he had what I had at that point. I'd like to correct the uh, record just for a minute about this uh, office in this 21st century. Um, that's not exactly uh, true, um, what was just said. Fact is, that money comes from the Senate to each senator. That money is then returned. In his case, it's returned to Mike Miller. The money doesn't come back to any of us. It's used in other areas around the state, in other districts, to support people that aren't managing their own budget. Not having a brick and mortar office doesn't do anything but take away from us and our constituents. One priority. And we need to absolutely look at that. 
I just finished my master's at Johns Hopkins. Number one forum they're running there, how to protect school safety. And they're doing it, they're looking at all different types of people as the experts. They're looking at the local school level. They're looking from children all the way to the administrators, to the teachers, to the experts. Every single person involved in the process. And that's the way I think that we move forward. We move forward as a community, together. Our community leaders are elected and they're established. When it comes to school safety, we should be working with them. We should be working with our sheriff's department, our police, the people who are recognized as the experts. And as we work as a community, we will be able to solve these problems together. Not somebody that knows all the answers and says, this is how you're gonna do it. We should do it together. The way the, uh, the budget, just, just to clarify this thing, uh, the, the way the budget works, and, and by the way, I'm very flattered to have uh, Chris Shank down from the governor's office here uh, to uh, conduct the coordinated attack. Um, the, the way the, uh, the Senate budget works is, is that, and it's a little bit different from the delegates, is that we're given a budget of about $40,000, and that's to be used for salary for personnel in your office and uh, some other sundry things, and including an office. So if, uh, if the senator pays for a brick and mortar office, which might cost you $12,000 a year or more, then that's gonna come out of your office. We wouldn't have the money to pay for staff to come and help you with things. So then back uh, onto the question of school safety. You know, we got a lot done this year. That was a, that was a really big issue, it was a really big job. I'm sorry I don't have more time to talk about that. Calvert County gained your support for a $41 million borrowing authority for new governmental center without a tax cut. Why are St. Mary's citizens held to a different standard than Calvert County citizens? So the delegations are different. And in fact, uh, when we were doing the, uh, the St. Mary's County delegation bills two years ago, we'd gone through the code home thing and there was a big question about how much debt was the appropriate debt level for the county. So part of the debt package that we ended up putting together and we agreed on as a team was, uh, just keeps coming in now. Uh, part of that was uh, we wanted to uh, get a property tax cut for the citizens of St. Mary's County in order to enable the uh, $26 million that the uh, commissioners had uh, arrived at. Uh, in the end, and I'm sorry the commissioner, uh, Randy Guy, isn't here with us tonight. In the end, I ended up negotiating with Commissioner Guy to get rid of that particular section of the bill in exchange for uh, a, an offer from him that they would pick a tax and reduce it. So, in fact, in that case, Commissioner Guy is the one who personally agreed to the constant yield in order to get the bond authority for St. Mary's County. Um, the uh, issue is the governor has a completely different constituent base than what we have here in St. Mary's County and Calvert County. St. Mary's and Calvert County, we're conservative Republicans. The governor does not have that across the state. It's different for him. So when we look at things, and I've actually had this exact discussion with him sitting in his office. The fact is, I'm gonna vote for you, for our citizens. I'm gonna go along with you and your vote. I'm not going to vote to make our schools, our colleges less safe, like my opponent did after he told the governor how he was gonna vote. Yeah. Um, so you might wanna squeeze that out a little bit later. So the question uh, was SB 543. And the, the entire piece of legislation was about removing the question of criminal background on student application later in the application, away from the initial application into later in the process. So initially, basically everybody was opposed to it. And the, uh, the colleges and the universities came to us and they asked for an amendment to the bill, which we gave them. And when we gave that to them, they removed all of their opposition. In fact, privately they told us that they liked it because what it was going to allow them to do is look at criminal background only of 1,000 kids instead of 10,000 kids. It was going to make their life easier and actually allow them to uh, make the campus more safe. And, and very explicitly in the bill, it says, institutes of higher education may inquire into a student's criminal background for purposes of admission and campus residency. You only make a certain amount of money and you have a basis that is under the threshold that we should all have a good education and you get to go there. I disagree with the fact 
that there should be that it should be open to people that are not uh, U.S. citizens. Senator Wong, why did you vote against the bill? So I voted against the bill explicitly because it was specifically, and I mean very specifically targeted, to provide a free college education to illegal immigrants. Now the bill as it was constructed basically says, hey, we're going to create a fund, we're going to put $10 million out there, we're going to give it away in grants, and we're going to set it up so that it goes to kids from families of you know, certain incomes down below a particular level. So not so bad yet. But then it also says that in order to apply for the grant, and it's a first come first serve thing, in order to apply for the grant, you have to have graduated from a Maryland high school. So that's one day. In previous bills, several years ago, when they uh, were doing uh, in-state tuition for illegal immigrants, they said, you gotta be here three years, you have to pay taxes, blah, blah, blah. Well, this time they said, no, you just have to have graduated from high school. So for one day, we tried to amend that out in the committee. The bill came through my committee. We tried to get rid of it in the committee and fix it. They refused. That's when we knew it was very explicitly for the singular purpose of free education for illegals. We tried to amend it again on the floor, and they would not. We could do things to control all the legal and registered weapons uh, to the left side of that point, but it'll do nothing to affect all the illegal and unregistered weapons. And in fact, uh, you know, there's always been a big question about how often are illegal weapons used in crime, and I had a bill uh, put in to try to figure that out. Uh, but I withdrew it because about an hour before I showed up, uh, we had the police commissioner from uh, Baltimore, before he was invited, uh, we had the police commissioner from Baltimore come in, and he was asked point blank about 343 murders in uh, Baltimore. How many of those were done with a, a legal and registered weapon? His answer was none. Not a single one. So we can pile on all the gun control we want, things like a bump stock ban, this uh, uh, red flag bill, and it will not affect all of the gun violence in the state. Mr. The fact of the matter is, Senate Bill 907 was sponsored only by my opponent. And that bill would have taken away, it would have created a public database that any person that used a firearm in self-defense would have been listed. And by the way, in St. Mary's County, any of you that are familiar, if you ever target practice or discharged a firearm on any person's property other than your own and you didn't have written permission, you'd be a misdemeanor. You'd, you'd commit a misdemeanor and it's a thousand dollar fine. That is the, the criminal law. So the fact is, anybody that ever did that would be a criminal and, re, and be in that database. And there's only one person in the whole legislature that put that in. That was my opponent. Okay, I, I need a response. Spent a lot of time pointing at me. Um, so, what I was trying to do, like I said, with SB 907, is the question of how much gun violence, and, and this is the thing, how many people in here are gun owners? You know, a lot. Okay. As uh, Sheriff Cameron uh, was once asked, do you own a gun? He's like, no. I, mean, I own a bunch of them. Why would you only own one? So, with 907, what we were trying to get at is the question of how much gun violence is actually committed with legal and registered weapons? And, and I knew what the answer was, but weirdly, and this is the thing that I know everyone here is going to have a hard time believing, is that that information is not tracked. It's not tracked by the FBI, it's not tracked by the ATF, it's not tracked by the state police, it's not tracked by anybody. So what we were trying to get to is just the question of how much of this violence is actually being committed by legal registered weapons so that I can make the case compellingly, which I did, that a hey, gun control is not going to solve the problems in Baltimore. Shortly after becoming a candidate, I was approached by several veterans that had not had their cases heard so um, by their local constituents. So I went directly to Annapolis. I met with the Secretary of Veterans Affairs, George Owens. I have two events planned with him in the next week because I feel veterans, as I thank my opponent for being a veteran, veterans are how we live here today and we need to represent them. We go up and walk on the trail and visit with the veterans right across from my house. I want to work for them and with them. Thank you. About his information, I immediately had a meeting 
with uh, the Vice Chancellor of the University System of Maryland. He and I personally conferred, and we figured out exactly what the strategy was, and we started executing it immediately. Now, the unfortunate thing is, is that it didn't work. So that happens, and sometimes budget line items get killed. And in fact, I personally was engaging with the, uh, the chairman of the capital subcommittee, chairman of the budget committee, and the chairman of the uh, committee over in the House. And I was doing it constantly. It got to be a little bit of a joke between uh, Senator DeGrange and I. I kept threatening to cut his brakes. So there was, uh, there was daily engagement on this. We were constantly working it. It never lacked for attention. And in fact, I think the, uh, the delegates would agree that we were on top of this from day one. We're going to go on to the next question. Yeah. We're going to go on to the next question. Uh, Mr. Bailey, what is your position on aquaculture and its effect on property owners with air and rights? Thank you. Great question. Um, I'm sure we're talking about the uh, column oysters that are showing up in front of people's uh, houses out in, the, out in the river. And it's causing a great bit of controversy. Used to be property owner controlled the riparian rights in front of their property as far as what could be out there. This And used to be able to lease, the property owners leased all the oyster bottom out in front of their houses and they controlled it. State came in a couple years ago and said, wait a minute, we're going to take away your riparian rights. So now these oyster uh, farms are coming right in front of people's uh, houses, right? And what they're still paying high property tax for the smell and the vision that is obstructed and their ability to get to deep water. The uh, state is acting like a bully on this one, and as far as our county and our constituents are concerned, we're gonna have to address it. Senator Wong. All right, so if we wanna clean up the bay, there's basically two things that we need to do. So first and foremost is that we gotta fix the Conowingo Dam because 80% of all the pollutants and all the sediment that's in the bay comes over that over that dam. And uh, actually, Governor Hogan's office has uh, really uh, led the way on this thing. And uh, I believe we have a test dredge going now. We're going to figure out, uh, have a pretty good idea of what it's going to take to fix that. The second thing we got to do is that we have got to unleash aquaculture. Virginia has done this. They have, they have oysters growing like you read about. And it is clearing up the bay. And it is clearing up their tributaries. And Maryland needs to, uh, to get on board this and to make this happen. But at the same time that we do that, we have to protect everyone's uh, individual land needs. Now, everyone knows that, hey, wherever my property is, I got land rights there. Um, but your land rights don't really extend beyond your boundaries. Now, there's some zoning considerations, right? You don't want someone building the Empire State Building next to your house. So there are some limitations to it. And then as we look out into the water, you have some uh, rights that extend a little bit, but not very far. 